Hello everyone, so you want to kickstart your bug bounty hunting career in 2022, then this video is for you. And it's a summary of my Twitch live bug bounty hunting class that I streamed yesterday. This is part one, which basically is about picking a target and things you have to pay attention to so you are safe when doing security research or ethical hacking. And let's jump right into it. There is a document where you can follow along. I'll put the link down in the description. It's rc.to slash notes. And it contains all the commands and links to different tools and repositories that we use during the live class. So picking a target, if you use platforms like HackerOne, Barcrowd, or Antiquity, you benefit from the contracts and agreements with the target companies and are protected as a researcher as long as you act in scope and according to their rules, terms and conditions, like rules of engagement, so on and so forth. We will look at that in detail by using Red Bull as an example. And um, I'm not affiliated with any of these platforms, so go sign up for all of them. These are the three main ones. There are also others like Synagrad Team or Yes We Hack. It's worth to check these out as well. So just go find something that you like and a program that is interesting. HackerOne uh, has a directory where they list their programs and when they launch, how many reports there are, bounty minimum and average. So um, just make yourself familiar with each and every platform. It all looks kind of um, similar and you can also look at the statistics of each program, like how many reports, when was the last report resolved, what's the average time for getting resolved. Maybe you want to filter your targets based on individual criteria, and this is very helpful. Today, we will look at Red Bull. Red Bull is a public program, which means we don't have to um, sign a non-disclosure agreement or private programs in general. We are not allowed to talk about it, about what we do, what the assets are, even what the name of the private program is. So for this course, it will be a public program. This is also called the vulnerability disclosure program most of the time, and it's open for everyone. So you don't need a special invite to actually play along and follow me doing different things. There's a short description. So Red Bull appreciates security researchers um, that help them to keep their assets safe. Be free to read that in more detail yourself. And this is the most important part besides the platform rules and hacker ethics that are advertised by each platform and their terms of conditions. Like I said, this is program specific and you should make yourself familiar before you engage in any action with their targets. So they obviously require that whenever we sign up, we use an at integrity.me address. And you might think, okay, where do I get that address? It's basically your username at integrity.me and there's also something for HackerOne, like we are hackerone.com uh, that you will find during the signup process and on the FAQ and help pages of each platform. If you use automated tooling, we should limit to five requests per second. This is very important, especially if you automate your tool chain later on, that you will have a parameter where you can store this value and uh, maybe others like a specific user agent, a custom one that says Mozilla, Chrome, whatever, dash superhero one. So when they browse their logs, they can actually see, okay, what did you do? And um, they know that this was not a um, harmful attack. This was actually part of security testing according to their bug bounty hunting program. Um, also request header could be an X dash bug bounty hunting header or something like that would be specified here, but for this program, it's not relevant right now. Right now is also a good point because uh, pay attention to these rules of engagement and the scope. It might change over time. And this little button will give you uh, the information for this example that they added this recently. So this is part of the latest version. They added it in uh, September. And um, yeah, it's worth to come back and check these things on a regular basis. They give you also some promise that um, triaging will be done soon um, or an Ripple employee will soon reach out after the triaging. That's what they write here. And they're happy to respond to any questions if you're actually using the button to 
right top corner here on the platform. So you don't need to find emails to reach out to them. You can directly reach out to them through the hacking platforms. And they respect the safe harbor clause that we can find below. So you promise basically a couple of things that you uh, will give them the information to reproduce it. That's a clear attack scenario, quality over quantity, uh, that you do not discuss or post vulnerabilities without their consent. So especially also uh, YouTube and Vimeo proof of concepts. Don't share this, uh, that with your friends. It's responsible disclosure. So um, discuss it with them first. If you then later on want to release a write-up or want to brag about it, so hold back until they give their okay. Maybe for some of the bugs you find, they won't. Um, but yeah, that's just part of a good partnership that you want to establish with all the programs that you hack with. Um, yeah. But we'll also keep you out of trouble. So that's the, that's the important part. So when you use automatic scanners, like be creative and do it yourself. Um, like it's not if you use, like you do not use, so like nuclear templates, don't hammer on their servers and uh, waste resources, waste your time. Um, they don't want to block your IP. Limit it to accounts that belong to you and don't cause any harm to the brand or its customers. Um, I think it's, it's important that this is being said, otherwise it would not be here. And um, it is very important for us to understand, okay, where is the line that we don't want to cross? If we stay within this boundary, Red Bull promises us that all the ethical hacking activities conducted consistent with the researcher guidelines, the program description, and restrictions, the terms, constitute authorized conduct under criminal law. Red Bull will not pursue civil action or initiate a complaint for existential good faith violations, nor will they file a complaint for circumventing technological measures used by us to protect the scope as part of your ethical hacking activities. If legal action is initiated, so on and so forth, Red Bull will actually support you in making it known that it was in compliance and with their approval to what is written here in the program. So it is important that you stick to what they write here. So I summarized it here in the document a little bit. Of course, this is not complete. The document is just some notes. So please always read it carefully yourself. This is also not kept up to date in my document. This is just a snapshot from yesterday night. Um, and the next thing, once we understood the rules of engagement and what we have to pay attention to, we will look at what is in scope and what is out of scope, which means the company could have multiple web servers and machines, computers and whatnot but they might not want that you actually hack or try to find vulnerabilities on all of their assets. So they might exclude some stuff or specifically tell you what you are allowed to target. And this is the scope. So we will go back here to the integrity program page and we see that we can filter this stuff if it would be a huge list. Some of the programs have actually are very useless, so it's good that you can filter it. And this is a wildcard. Uh, domain that they give us like star.redbull.com which is very good so basically all the domains subdomains that you can find ending with .redbull.com are in scope and you're allowed to hack on them according to the rules there are also other domains that you can find if you can confirm that uh, it's related to red bull and this is if you look at the who is record and you can find this information this address good there are also ios and android apps same goes for that for this course, for this example, we will just focus on the start at redbull.com because um, it's about getting the idea, getting the concept, and then individualizing your approach is a key success factor. Don't do it the same as I'm doing. Don't do it exactly the same as anyone else is doing it. Like alternate it, find your own style, your own flavors, your own tools, and improve it over time. Good. There are also things that are out of scope. So that could be specific vulnerabilities, uh, that could be specific domains. And it is, in fact, a reflected XSS on Red Bull Media House, anything that belongs to that, findings related to JIRA, or any information disclosure that contains no sensitive information. And that is what they have in their uh, lower list a lot. Things that actually where you, where you cannot show impact, um, they 
obviously receive a lot of reports if you look on the right hand side uh, over 5,000 and only 1,200 something were actually relevant so um, I think they also improved that over time and added more stuff here so you don't waste your time and um, it's always a little bit sad if you get a duplicate or you get um, an informational like you feel oh I didn't do a very good job so it helps us also the stuff that's out of scope and um, especially domains that don't belong to the program um, basically that could get you in trouble so try to put that also in your tool chain if you automate stuff uh, what is out of scope that you don't do uh, directory uh, fuzzing on, on, on these targets because this is not covered by the program which means this is also not covered by the safe harbor statement okay so that is a list we would need to cross check once we have our final list of targets then again automated scanning or fuzzing limited to five requests per second we don't want to uh yeah ddos their servers like uh, that the servers go down and are no longer reachable um there are a couple of things here like just read it carefully yourself please and um yeah, some, some funny statements like subdomain take over without taking over the subdomain. So there must have been some reports about that. Um, and in general, um, issues with no realistic exploit scenarios, attack surfaces, spam, social engineering. Like, make yourself familiar with all of it that they write here before you start interacting with their assets. Okay, that should be enough to understand about the program as such. It will be similar on Hacker One. it will be similar on Backroad, and it's very, very important, I cannot stress it enough, that you stick to this in very detail. But if you do, you will have fun, and you will get rewarded for your hard work. The next step is covered in part two. I streamed yesterday after, uh, evening, yeah? And uh, this will be part of another video. So thanks so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe. Um, I would look forward to see you on Twitch someday. And thanks for all your support. Happy hacking. Stay safe. And goodbye.